Zach here from Gravel Bike California in Malibu, ready for another send it up to the Backbone Trail. Now, the Backbone Trail is 68 miles stretching from Will Rogers Park in Santa Monica to the end of the Santa Monica Mountains, but only certain segments are open up to bikes. The one we're doing today is probably my favorite. Single tracky, but a lot of flow. At the same time, it's very popular. So the fact that it's hot and overgrown is probably a good time to not run into other people. At the same time, it's gonna be hot and overgrown. Didn't think it through. Let's roll. While the Backbone Trail only became continuous in 2016, there are only three main segments where biking is allowed, with the center being the longest, of which the western half is best suited for gravel bikes. The hardest part is getting there, as we climbed over 2,000 feet up before covering three segments defined by crossing Yerba Buena, Mulholland Highway, and Encinal. Starting out PCH, good way to hammer out the miles, hopefully beat the heat. Not a weatherman. <laughs> The first seven miles never take you over 200 feet above sea level, but it's undulating nonetheless, soon crossing us into Ventura County, caught between two climates with the heat from the mountains to the breeze touching us from the coast. Coming up early on the lunchtime spot in Neptune's Net, signaling our turn onto Yerba Buena Road. Yerba Buena is about a seven and a half mile climb, so it's off light at the beginning, then it kind of like eases up as you kind of get to backbone. Another thing was pretty affected by the Woosley fire. Thank God this road is paved. The first three miles of the climb flows at a good tempo, be it from these long sweeping curves or the ample amount of morning shade. But as you see the unique ridges by Sandstone Peak, your definition of progress changes as the air feels drier than Mars, but there's good news as you're struggling with a silky quarter mile reprieve, which wasn't possible a few years ago as Yerba Buena was one of the readiest roads around. But the fun led up coming into Circle X Ranch where everyone moseyed in for some H2O and kicked up our heels a bit. But as it might look like ground control out back, which used to be a Boy Scouts camp, now serves for other outdoor adventures. Unfortunately, there's still some climbing rolling out of Circle X, and it may be on the pitchier side, but it was only a mile of road vert ahead, while most of the group was likely unaware that the highest point in the Santa Monica Mountains and Sandstone Peak lay somewhere behind, but while reaching the apex is welcome, it's good to ride in a group to not overshoot the start of our first third segment. Seeing the air come out gave a sense of what was ahead, as the first segment covers 4.4 miles, and while the start is downhill, with some tight cornering off the back, you're clearly gonna want a wide tire of 40 and above, especially in the summer as backbone dries out. But it doesn't take long to start flipping your numbers in the Z-axis, <coughs> as the dust started to kick up, not to mention a little overgrowth on top of it all. But this mile and a half section of climbing is relatively steady, except one necessary dismount zone, with the recent washout the only major scar on this trail. Another important note in this climb is uh, <laughs> how most of it takes place on the north side of the ridge. As reaching the snuggest hairpin on this ascent, signals not only coming up on the highest point of the day, but also some pretty rewarding views of the Pacific Ocean, which you can't argue with its beauty, but you can on its ability to distract as the curves continue to whip around, making you fully engaged with backbone as a gravel bike might best be suited towards. As Yerba Buena came back into view, this gestures the last half mile of the segment acting like a parachute with some specific cornering to slow you down, but this shaded overgrowth is welcomed 
but not for long, exiting us out to the road, bringing a take stock moment of where am I and what is in my bike? Uh, you know, a little, uh, it was fun. Yeah, uh -huh. a little, little, uh, little rutted towards the end, so I probably should have uh, maybe slowed down, maybe not have tried to drink my water from my water bottle, but uh, yeah, all good. <laughs> Hope someone got that on camera. Yeah, maybe they did. <laughs> While the second dirt segment is identical in length to the first, the character is far different, with one of the best stretches of single track ahead. But you'll have to put a little effort in first, as the first third of a mile is the most technical portion of the day, accentuated with a steep and loose stretch where everybody's shoes touch dirt. But soon the flow was back, exiting us onto the fire road, giving us our best views to the north for the day, as this was the only piece of wide dirt on this ride, saying goodbye to our looks to Conejo Valley, as our focus would be more towards the Pacific Ocean and managing sustained efforts. But I knew this pain would soon be forgotten as we headed on to the most special portion of the day. This final 2.6 miles is one of my all-time favorite uphill sections, but I went opposite of our gravel guide because coming down this is even better. As you can tell, whoever built this part of the trail really had biking in mind as you build up speed from the get-go. But caution is not to let your confidence get ahead of that as it's easy to push the envelope here. But one of the reasons why I chose the center for the hottest time of the year as the temp served as a proper deterrent, not crossing anyone hiking or on two wheels, allowing us all to spread our wings. The only thoughts going through your brain seeing Mulholland is, can I do that again? But there was another mile left on the other side. And while it's impossible to match the high bar set already, if you're complaining about this last segment, people may call you Debbie Downer to your face. There was only so much shade for this group. So we continued on to wrap up this send it. And while this last climb wasn't eliciting smiles, heading westbound on Ensignal was the easiest option we had. And after three quarters of a mile of this, as we soon wiggled our way towards Decker Canyon, with one last look towards the Boney Mountains, we stopped for water, even with a lot of elevation loss just ahead, and to check out who has crashed so far but Decker Canyon is one of my favorite descents to PCH. We have to power through the turns as the payoffs on this road only improve the further you go. Returning back to PCH left us with exactly 5k left, but much more fun on a bike, as it was rewarding returning as a group, especially uniformly agreeing how unnecessary the sign was. But the real play was taking the parallel Broad Reach Road to help us cross the highway later, past one of the most exclusive stretches along the shoreline. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. 
Finishing up in good time, we made it back to Trancas Canyon ahead of schedule as this send it hit all the notes we could hope for. So normally I use my looks to scare people off, not things like heat or overgrownness. These harbingers seem to have worked, but we had a great time out there. You know, this is almost a 10 mile section of single track, among the best of anywhere I've ridden, but definitely in Los Angeles. If you had a chance to ride this section of Backbone Trail, well, maybe another summer for the Send It. Anyways, if you want to support us, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, or try and grab yourself some GVC gear at our shop so we could bring you more. And stay dirty.